feeling the sensation. Live from RTV6 Indianapolis, this is 6 News at 5. A small plane headed for Eagle Creek Airport in Indianapolis has crashed today. It happened this morning, about 15 miles north of Lexington, Kentucky. The plane on its way from Tennessee to Indianapolis. Ken Owen is here with the latest details now. Ken? Clyde, 6 News has confirmed that the plane took off this morning from the Tri-Cities Airport near the Tennessee-Virginia line, headed for the Eagle Creek Air Park here in Indianapolis. The small plane went down in a wooded area at around 11.45 this morning in Leesburg, which is in central Kentucky. An FAA spokesperson says it is believed four people were on board the plane. Police at the scene say there were no survivors. One witness says the plane appeared to be a Beach Baron, a twin-engine aircraft that normally holds four to six passengers. Another says it sounded like the plane was having engine problems. I just looked up and I see it. It was like a real tight corkscrew and it was sort of nose down like this, but corkscrewing. And it was coming down and it was like the closer it got to the ground, the faster it was going. And it hit with such impact, I heard the thud. At this hour, authorities are holding a news conference at the crash scene in Kentucky. We are expecting to learn from that news conference exactly how many people were on board, who the victims are, their hometowns, and who owned the aircraft. Families of the victims still being notified at this hour. We will continue to follow the story and have more for you, of course, throughout the evening here on 6 News. Clyde and Dion. Okay, we'll check thanks, back Ken. with you later. Thank you, Ken. Another tragedy, a life's journey cut short just as it was beginning. Funeral services were today for Tanisha Towner, murdered last week, allegedly by a man who lived in her neighborhood. Jack Reinhardt gathered with the mourners today, and he joins us live from the city county building with, with more on their story now. Jack? Well, Clyde. Kentucky. The private pl twin-engine plane was headed to Eagle Creek Airport in Indianapolis when it went down around noon today. Four people died in the crash, including two members of a well-known racing family, Tony Bettenhausen and his wife, Shirley. Also killed on the crash, two of Bettenhausen's business partners. Coming up at 5.50 tonight, we'll have a live interview with motor racing expert Robin Miller on the loss of the Bettenhausens and the many tragedies the family has faced in recent years. Tonight, city leaders are tackling an issue that affects more than just football fans. Bettenhausen, Dion Willis is here with the latest for us. Thank you both. A team spokesman confirms that within the last 30 minutes that Tony Bettenhausen was indeed on board the plane that crashed this morning just 15 miles north of Lexington, Kentucky. The plane, which was a twin-engine Beach Baron, crashed into a wooded area just before noon today in central Kentucky. The plane took off from the Tri-City Airport near the Tennessee-Virginia border. It headed for the Eagle Creek Air Park which is on the northwest side of Indianapolis. Witnesses say that the plane sounded as if it was having engine trouble. It then corkscrewed directly toward the ground. Federal investigators are on the scene, but they have said little about the crash. Federal officials have said, though, that they believe four people were on board the plane. They believe also that there were no survivors. As we said, Tony Bettenhausen was a former IndyCar driver and was an Indy race owner. Bettenhausen's father died in a crash at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We'll have more throughout the night here on 6 News. Names of the other victims will have that, plus an interview with motor racing expert Robin Miller coming up. These are Andrea Moorhead, Bob Gregory's Skytrack forecast, and sports with Dave Calabro. This is Channel 13 Eyewitness News at 5.30. Tonight, couples everywhere are taking some time to rekindle relationships and just enjoy a little romance. A little romance, but there are some lifetime partnerships. Hunter's family faces even more tragedy tonight. A plane crash kills former driver Tony Bettenhausen, his wife Shirley, and two other people. I'm Ann Ryder. More information continues to come into the newsroom about the crash. We'll update you. A tragedy in the past. Yeah, the Bettenhausen family raced uh, Tony Bettenhausen killed in the early 60s at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And Tony's always spent his life chasing that dream, trying to win the Indy 500. Tragic news today. We'll tell you about that coming up next in sports. And Robin Miller, a close friend of Tony Bettenhausen, joins us next live on Channel 13. Stay with us. Time Indy 500 driver and car owner Tony Bettenhausen, his wife Shirley, have been killed in a plane crash in Kentucky. We've also now confirmed Indianapolis businessmen Larry Rangel and Russ Roberts were also killed in that crash. The tragic news is spreading throughout the racing community as we speak right now. Indianapolis Star's Robin Miller, a very close friend of the Bettenhausens, kind enough to join us now from the Indianapolis Star. Robin, uh, you know, we, you and I are used to the tragic situation of racing and how dangerous it is, but you don't expect one of your friends to die this way. No, and I tell you, the, all the things that the Bettenhausens and the McElroy family has been through, David, Jim McElreath, who, who ran at Indy almost as long as Tony did, lost his son James in a sprint car crash at Winchester in 1977, and now this tragedy is just another in the long line of, of the Star Cross, Benton House, and McElroy family deals. And, and plus, all the people that have lost their lives in racing through the years Alan Kilwicky, Wilbur Shaw, and uh, you know, I, Curtis Turner, Al Holbert. So um, I flew with Tony two or three times.
times in the last couple of years when he had a single engine Cessna and he had a brand new twin engine Beach Baron and last week at spring training he was all fired up because it could go a lot faster and it was a lot better and, and he took it very seriously as flying. I mean he was instrument rated and everything so uh, it's hard. I talked to his brother Merle a little while ago. It's just hard to believe that something like this happens to the same family over and over again. Well and you mentioned this guy was not a part time flyer. Tony took his, his flying very seriously. He knew what to do in, in an airplane. Yeah, and, and I think that uh, if you guys would have seen how this guy started in 1975, he came up from, here from NASCAR, towing his little Chevelle with this ratty old truck, and he ended up having this multi-million dollar racing operation. Uh, the, the guy was just a great success story in, in, in hanging there, and when he started driving midgets, um, that's when I was racing, and, and they laughed at him and said, you know, you can't drive, you're wasting your time just because your name's Bentonhausen. But, Tony became a really good Indy 500 qualifier and driver, almost won the Michigan 500, and uh, I think I probably was more happy to watch him dispel all his doubters when he got an Indy car than anything I've probably done in the 31 years I've covered racing. Robin, uh, you know his father, of course, was killed here in 61, but that never tainted his uh, dreams of trying to win the Indy 500, did it? Right, and, and Dave, a couple times, him and Gary, Gary almost had the 72 Indy 500 won, and he broke with 18 laps to go, the ignition brakes. Uh, and then Gary gets hurt and Roger Penske fires him when he's in, a, in his hospital bed. And when, when Tony starts racing and then him and Gary are teammates for three or four times, uh, they never quit chasing that dream. I mean, the Bentonhausens together as a family probably had 45 Indy 500 starts and never won. And they were close several times. But I think just the perseverance and the fact that they were so much a part of, of USAC and dirt racing and IndyCar racing, they were just one of the first families of racing that people really identified with. Robin, I know it's a tough time because he was a close friend of yours. We appreciate your time uh, here on Channel 13. Okay, Dave. Talk to you later. Robin Miller with all the latest uh, on Tony. A sad, sad story. It really it is. This guy will be missed by many, many people. And our, our thoughts and prayers go out to the family in Monroe tonight. That's right. There's more to come as we look to see what caused the crash. And we hope to learn that. Dave, thanks very much. On new and next at 6. Tony Bettenhausen has died in a plane crash. It happened this morning on a flight that was destined for Indianapolis in Bettenhausen's small private plane. We have team coverage tonight. Sports director Ed Sorensen has reaction from the racing community. But first, Martha Weaver is here with details of what happened. Martha? Ken, a spokesman for his racing team confirms that Tony Bettenhausen was one of four people on board the plane that crashed in central Kentucky this morning. We've also just learned the names of the other three people on board that plane. They are Bettenhausen's wife, Shirley, Indianapolis businessman Larry Ronhale, the owner of La Margarita Restaurant on the northwest side, and Russ Roberts, a partner in Bettenhausen's auto racing team. The twin-engine plane went down around 11.45 Eastern time this morning in a wooded area just north of Lexington, Kentucky. The plane was headed for Eagle Creek Air Park here in Indianapolis after taking off from an airport near the Tennessee-Virginia border. I just looked up and I see it. It was like a real tight corkscrew and it was sort of nose down like this, but corkscrewing. And it was coming down and it was like the closer it got to the ground, the faster it was going. And it hit with such impact, I heard the thud. And it was five to eight seconds later, uh, I heard the explosion. And within just a few seconds later, a big black cloud. Federal investigators are on the scene in Kentucky, but they've given no indication yet as to what may have caused the crash. Again, former IRL owner Tony Bettenhauser has died in a plane crash today. The other three victims are Bettenhausen's wife, Shirley, Indianapolis businessman Larry Ron Hale, and Russ Roberts, a partner in Bettenhausen's auto racing team. Ken and Dion. Yeah, it is a tragedy. And our hearts go out to their families. We'll have more on the reaction from the sports world coming up in a few minutes with Ed Sorensen. In other news tonight, a child support system that has been plagued with problems ever since last summer is dealing with a new headache tonight. The state is garnishing the tax refunds of non-custodial parents, even though those parents have paid their support. They called six for help, and call six reporter James Ford is here with more. Well, these are... Roberts is such a long-time friend of Tony's, as is Larry. Larry has three wonderful children also. But I think a measure of Tony is when you realize his friends are there for years and years and years because he is that type of person loved by everybody. I will pray for Tony's yeah. children. Boy, that is a tough one. Okay, Derek Daly, our sports analyst, with uh, your thoughts. Thanks. Nice. Well, Bettenhausen Motorsports has its offices on Gasoline Alley on the city's west side. News 8's Glenn Augustine is live there now. And Glenn, what time did team members get the news?
Well, they got confirmation of the deaths around 2.30 this afternoon. Right now, they are in a series of meetings. Russ Roberts and Tony Bettenhausen were two of the four co-owners of that cart team that's uh, with a car driven by Michelle Jourdain. It's the Herdex car in the cart racing series. The other two co-owners are inside the Benton Motorsports offices right now, meeting with team members to decide where the team goes from here. As we've heard already, Tony Bettenhausen was on his way back to Indianapolis after having taken part in the cart spring training down in Florida and when this plane went down earlier this afternoon the team members right now tell me they're in a state of shock they don't know what to say and so therefore they're not making any comment on camera although they may sometime later on this evening right now just a great sense of sadness here shock at the loss of uh, two of the co-owners co of this team and obviously the biggest name in Tony Bettenhausen Mike and Debbie Glenn Augustine thanks well, the One of racing's most famous families, he made his name as a driver. He drove in 11 Indy 500s, his best finish, a seventh at his very first start. Back in 81, since 86, Tony has run Bettenhausen Motorsports on the kart circuit and Indy based Stefan Johansson drove for Tony for five years from 92 through 96. Stefan joins us now live from Gasoline Alley at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Stefan, first of all, thanks so much for your time. I know this has got to be a very difficult time for you. Talk about Tony Bettenhausen, first of all as a man we'll get into the driver aspect of his uh, his life later well i think tony was truly one of the most honest people i've ever met and and uh, a, a great character and uh, a man with a great sense of humor uh, you know just the, one of the kindest people i've ever met did you ever get the feeling being around him that his passion for motorsports had diminished in any way by what it had cost his family Gary, his brother, was in some horrific accidents. Of course, he lost his father in 61 in a practice crash at the Speedway, yet he just continued to exude that passion for racing. Well, you know, I think it's like most of us that's in this business. It's, it's, it's in our blood, and it's, it's what we'd love to do, you know. And, and uh, Tony certainly had the passion and the, and the fire in the belly, and I don't think that ever diminished, you know. And I think he was on the, you know, on the verge of breaking the team to break through again, right. you know, and I just feel very very sad obviously for what's happened that team had come a long long way from some very humble beginnings i guess bettenhausen motorsports started back in 86 when he didn't have a ride and tony and a bunch of his buddies pooled their resources and bought him one but you say that team was on the verge of some big things so he must have really been a savvy businessman in addition to being a good driver and, and somebody you would like to drive for well i think one of the greatest qualities of tony was that he had a lot of integrity and then you know he was a truly honest man through and through and I think you know these I do believe that these things pay off eventually and, and uh, you know he had a great respect from everybody in the community and, and uh, you know it's just a very a terrible thing yeah I understand not a whole lot can be said but Tony B was a great one he will be missed Stefan thanks so much for your time thank you Stefan Johansson joining us live from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway we'll have more of course later on tonight on the uh, death of Tony Bennett. yeah great loss to the community to their family and their friends well, with a great heart Thank you, Ed. Did you know there is... Uh, it's hard. I talked to his brother Merle a little while ago. It's just hard to believe that something like this happens to the same family over and over again. And, of course, we'll have more on this developing story coming up tonight. Good night, everybody. RPM Tonight is a presentation of ESP... ...that run from the flight control surfaces to the pilot's control yoke were intact. Investigators removed the two engines and propellers from the twin-engine Beach Baron for further inspection. So far, the most telling data is from the radar and pilot's last communication. The pilot was cleared to 12,000 feet. He reported that he was out of the ice at 10,500. He did comment that he had ice accumulation on the windshield and the wings and that air traffic control subsequently lost communications after that point. Investigators say Tony Bettenhausen Jr., his wife Shirley, business partner Russ Roberts, and restaurant owner Larry Ron Hale had been maintaining a pretty consistent altitude at 10,100 feet. But in their last minute, radar shows they descended at a rate of 6,000 to 9,000 feet per minute. It was just doing a corkscrew. And I mean, it, and it was like the closer it got to the ground, the faster we're going. Late this afternoon, investigators took the engines and the propellers to a nearby airport. Tomorrow and the next day, they'll spend continuing to test those items. After that, we're told Monday they'll issue a preliminary report, which will just be fact. They say it'll take months.
months before they're ready to really rule on a probable cause of the crash. We're live in Leesburg, Kentucky. Sarah Frieden, 6 News. Thank you, Sarah, and funeral arrangements are still pending here. Ben Morrison continues our team coverage from Gasoline Alley with what happens now at Bettenhausen Motorsports. Ben? Well, Clyde fans at the 500 will long remember Tony B flying around the track. Racing was his first love, but surely aviation must have been a close second. Tony Bettenhausen is gone now, but his sports team will live on. Okay, how far down is the... Tony Bettenhausen won't see the start of the racing season, which begins at Homestead, Florida next month, but his memory will make a strong showing. Tony's brother Merle says the Satin team is driven to stay together and bring home a winning season. On his behalf, it still will be a good season. It's just that you won't have that smiling face and the, and the tower, you know, looking over things. We'll have somebody else doing that for him, but uh, we will make it successful for him. The co-owners of the team say carrying on the Bettenhausen racing tradition is their number one goal. And I think that's the least we can do and for his memory is to make every effort and uh, to continue as, uh, as, a, as a Bettenhausen Motorsports um, racing entity. Tony B. was more than a racer. He was a savvy businessman. Tony was able to distance himself from his personal uh, ego and his personal desires and could place the team and, and the success of the team above that. Tony's first love was racing, but his current passion was flying his new plane, remembers his brother. Every time I talk to him, he said, Merle, you got to come for a ride with me. Yeah. I mean, I had, a, I had a Chevy, now I got a Cadillac. I mean, this plane, you know, it's 180 knots. It, it does this. It's got all this bells and chimes and great things. And, and he had a passion for flying and, 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 and flying safe. And team members believe there would be no more fitting tribute to Tony Bettenhausen than to bring home a winning season. Clyde? Thank you very much, Ben. Now, for the friends and families of the four victims, the news of this tragedy is still setting in. Russ Roberts, a business partner of Tony Bettenhausen, was president and part owner of Friendly Foods, based in Noblesville. This company operates about a half dozen grocery stores in central Indiana. And today, employees and managers were going about their jobs while thinking about the man who was their boss, who was their friend. Mr. Roberts was a... Um, uh, he was a good guy, and uh, he was uh, well liked by uh, not only his employees but his uh, associates, business associates. He's an intelligent businessman, and uh, he'll be uh, sadly missed. Friendly food stores were open today because, as Lyon says, that's the way Russ would have wanted it. The people who run the Indiana High School Athletic Association may soon be answering. Bettenhausen's plane was equipped with the icing equipment. But investigators don't know if those systems were working at the time of the crash. They also say the plane was descending at between 6,000 and 9,000 feet per minute before it crashed and burst into flames. The investigation begins as loved ones back in Indianapolis try to deal with the tragedy. Russ Roberts was part owner of Bettenhausen's race team and was president of Friendly Food Stores. Larry Rangel owned the La Margarita restaurant on the northwest side. Its doors remain closed today. But workers at a nearby restaurant remember Rangel fondly. Always easy going, um, easy to talk to, and always willing to uh, help me out in a situation when I needed help, and vice versa. Renee Huffman worked for Rangel for about five years. She says he's going to be missed. He was a great person, great heart. Um, really grew fond of him, and good friend. Now, Rangel's restaurant is expected to reopen tomorrow, and the NTSB says they are going to examine Bittenhauser's plane and engine, propeller and engine, in further detail tomorrow, and they hope to have some type of preliminary report out on the crash by early next week. Bob? All right, Darielle, thank you for that update. He wanted love, then money, but wound up instead. Boy. Investigators say they've measured and documented all that's left at the crash site, and what's left belongs to the people who died and the families who mourn them. Investigators expect to stay here at the airport to inspect the engines and the propellers for probably two days. They expect by Monday they'll release a preliminary report, but say it will probably be a couple of months before they're willing to announce a suspected cause of the crash. We're live in Central Kentucky. Sarah Frieden, 6 News. Okay, Sarah, thanks for the update. Now, Sarah mentioned and showed you the cart materials that were found in the wreckage. 
Tony and his wife and friends were returning from what's called spring training in South Florida. It's a tune-up to the cart season ahead. The last friends to see Tony, his wife and friends, are also good friends of mine, Tom Godby and his wife Jenny. Tom took Tony, Shirley, Larry and Russ to the airport in Florida, helped them load up the plane for that trip home. Tom told me tonight about their last time together on Sunday. Tony was uh, real, real happy and upbeat and positive about what was going to happen with the race team this year. And uh, we played some golf while we were down there. But it's just a great weekend, and this was just, you know, they're on their way home. Uh, uh, I know Larry around hell was missing his kids. Tony was wanting to get back and see uh, his youngest daughter, who's still at home, uh, uh, Taryn. And uh, so everybody's kind of, even though we had a good week, everybody's ready to go home and just get back to a normal lifestyle. Tom Godby. Tonight at 11 o'clock over on Channel 6, I'll have more of my interview with Tom, and I'll have more to tell you about these friends. Martha. Race fans will long remember Tony Bettenhausen flying around the track. While racing was his first love, aviation a close second. Tony's brother Merle says the race team is stunned by Tony's death, but they'll stay together and try to bring home a winning season. On his behalf, it still will be a good season. It's just that you won't have that smiling face and the and the tower, you know, looking over things. We'll have somebody else doing that for him, but uh, we will make it successful for him. The co-owners of the team say carrying on the Bettenhausen racing tradition is their top priority. Unlucky. As a competitor and a friend this afternoon. The former race car driver and current team owner, his wife and two racing associates were remembered in funeral services today. News 8's Tony Perkins joins us with more now from Crown Hill Cemetery. Tony. Right, Glenn. Tony Bettenhausen was also recalled as a businessman and a family man. He was the leader of an extended family that shared a life of triumphs and tragedies. It was clear from the very beginning. Tony Bettenhausen, his wife Shirley, and their friends were unique people who created an impact. Those attending the funeral services were reminded that the family that made motorsports the center of their lives made a difference in the lives of others. Some pass through this life without ever creating a ripple, but Shirley Ann left many footprints on my heart, and I have no doubt that she left at least one on each of yours. The focus was shared by the families of Larry Rangel and Russ Roberts. The business associates who traveled with the Bettenhausens on their ill-fated flight from Florida Monday. And it was also shared by those they left behind, the Bettenhausen daughters, Taryn and Bryn. I cannot be Shirley, I cannot be Tony, I cannot be your mom and dad, but that with the help of God and all your friends, I can be second best. And within that, I just say, I love both of them, and we will make this work with all your help. Thank you. When you look at the pictures of Tony and Shirley and Larry and Rosa all playing around together, to grasp the reality of what it means that they all got killed almost because they're friends and because they were living uh, the, the lives of really good friends, that's, that's, that's just hard to grasp. Procession ended here at Crown Hill Cemetery this afternoon. All four victims of that plane crash were recalled uh, as the uh, final ceremonies took place earlier today. Tony Bettenhausen's racing associates say they'll remember him once again when their racing league season begins in Florida next month. Glenn Tina. Thank you, Tony Perkins. Live. <laughs> for the four victims of the crash of Tony Bettenhausen's plane. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Julia Moffat. Hundreds of mourners turned out to pay their last respects today to racing standout Tony Bettenhausen, his wife Shirley, and two business associates killed in last week's plane crash in Kentucky. Eyewitness News reporter Chris Schubach shows us the services and tells us how the four friends will be fondly remembered. St. Luke Church, colorful and full, like the lives they celebrate.
you know how much it hurts to have them no longer physically present with us. Nearly a week after the tragic plane crash that killed four members of the racing family, hundreds of heavy hearts gathered to mourn, pray, and say goodbye. When I reflect back and remember about Larry, uh, I think of three things that he really stood for. He's always a gentleman, top notch, and he, he always um, lived by a set of principles. There was Russ, the hard-nosed, no-nonsense businessman, and Russ, the man who fulfilled his boyhood dreams. Some pass through this life without ever creating a ripple. But Shirley Ann left many footprints on my heart, and I have no doubt that she left at least one on each of yours. Back home again, in Indiana. As for the youngest of the Bettenhausen racing legacy, memories reach beyond that of driver to the man, the friend, the father. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you that Tony was the greatest race driver or that he was the most successful car owner, but I will tell you this, he's the best person I ever knew. For all that they meant to us, the joy, the laughter, the life that they lived among us and shared with us, oh God, for all that, we are deeply grateful and thankful. For my Indiana home. Chris Schubach, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. All four died Monday when Bettenhausen's small plane crashed in a Kentucky farm field. Bettenhausen was the youngest son in the famous racing family. Now, after that service, another show of the love and support for the Bettenhausen family. From Chopper 13, you can see the long lines of cars in the funeral procession. Police escorted the uh, procession down Meridian Street from 86th Street and then led them to the Crown Hill Cemetery for burial. As a driver and owner, Tony Bettenhausen made many friends throughout the racing fraternity. And sports anchor Chris Stout joins us now with reaction from those who knew Tony Bettenhausen the very best. Yes, yeah, certainly a tough day for their families, mm -hmm. but also for the friends. Tony Bettenhausen did not make his name because he won a lot of races. In fact, he never won an Indy 500, but that's not how he became a big player in the world of auto racing. Don High now with how his fellow drivers will remember him. The final realities of a tragic plane crash were in place for Tony, Shirley, Larry, and Russ. And as friends of all of those families wished to extend their final goodbyes, those who knew them best remembered. Johnny Rutherford. Jimmy McElreath and I uh, raced together at uh, the Devil's Bowl Speedway in, in Dallas, Texas back in the, in the late 50s and early 60s. And Jimmy... Uh, Jimmy was like a dad, and Shirley, uh, uh, they were like parents to me when I was on the road racing, so this has been a tough one. Bob Lazier was a rookie with Tony at the Speedway. Tony and I went back a very, very long way, and we, quite frankly, uh, skied every Thanksgiving for the last 10 years. His family and ours were very, very close. Um, Tony's going to be very, very much missed. When you see a tragedy like this at a racetrack for example people almost have to go numb block it out and then just function as best you can that's what seems to happen here today michelle jordan was to have been tony's driver this season for the first time the team had its initial shakedown in florida and tony will be with michelle when the green flag drops she we i'm sure with all of us and He'll be in the car, he'll be with me, and helping me, and supporting me, and telling me what to do, and, and that's going to help. You know, all I can say is, uh, adios, mi amigo. Goodbye, my friend. Now, Bittenhausen's Champ Car team will stay in operation for the 2000 season. The team will race in the cart season opener March 26th in Homestead, Florida. And I was not fortunate enough to know Tony and his family, but he seems like a great guy. I've heard nothing but great things said about him since the tragedy on Monday. All right. Thanks, Chris. Okay. We'll see you later on. Tonight, Indianapolis. Bettenhausen, Russ Roberts, and Larry Ron Hale. We start our coverage tonight with this report from Marilyn Carter. Back home again in Indiana. They have come home to their final resting place, lives cut short by tragedy. They all leave behind a rich legacy, the Bentonhausen's two teenage girls to carry on. I cannot be Shirley, I cannot be Tony, I cannot be your mom and dad, but that with the help
help of God and all your friends, I can be second best. And within that, I just say, I love both of them, and we will make this work with all your help. Among the more than 500 mourners are many from the racing fraternity, including Bettenhausen's newest driver who was with them during testing in Florida. He wanted to win really, really well, and uh, that's what we have to do, as you know, for, for him. But essentially, he escaped um, uh, death so many times, because when a racing driver puts a helmet on, it's, it's an occupational hazard. You know that could happen. But when you go to a hobby and fly an airplane, and then something like this happens and takes your friends down with you, it's hard to explain that to people, the, the tragic loss, the deep loss people feel. There are so many memories forever captured in minds, hearts, and photographs. And there are countless stories of Russ Roberts' friendship and business acumen, and of Shirley's faith and dedication to her family. Now their pastor offers a poem to comfort the children they so dearly loved. Oh, I long for household voices gone. For vanished smiles I long. But God hath led my dear ones on, and I trust God does no wrong. Three families joined by years of friendship are now joined by a common tragedy, one which bonds them as no other can. The Bettenhausen racing team is expected to go on. Its members say they will work exceptionally hard for Tony and Shirley's memory. From the Motor Speedway, Marilyn Carter, 6 News. Thank you, Marilyn. And funeral services were held earlier in the day for the fourth victim in the crash, Larry Ron Hale. His friends called him colorful, fun, and most of all, extraordinarily loving. The 49-year-old leaves behind his wife, Lori, and seven children. Ron Hale was owner of La Margarita Restaurant and a dear friend of all of the victims. Today, you hear the Mexican musicians who Ron Hale had played at his restaurant during the month of May helped bid him farewell. As for the crash investigation, we may get some answers in the coming week. A federal investigator is expected to release his preliminary findings early in the week. That report should tell us if he found any obvious mechanical problems with the twin-engine plane. A final report on the accident, including the suspected cause, should take at least six months to complete. A new high-tech device that lets you try out... Um, and I'm just looking to score as many points as possible. The last six winners went on to claim the title. Who will taste victory?